Hi everybody, so today we are gonna have another serious chat on here about body image. This is something you guys know I've been talking about for a while. It's one of my big passions about dancers in the ballet world and what they've been through. Um, but today we are gonna talk about what we can do, what you can do if you're struggling with it. This is not gonna be a sob story of my own <laughs> experience, which I think we've gone through. Most of you know already. If you don't, I will link it in a card. Um, and below, but I've had my own struggles of body image in this industry. I have had my own struggles with weight and trying to fill a mold in this industry. And a lot of you have too. You have written me so many messages, so many letters. It's, it's heartbreaking to me actually how, many, how much you all have struggled with this as well. And so what I want to talk about today is if you are struggling with body image, which by the way, most of us have something about ourselves that we don't like, <laughs> that we'd love to change. For me, it's my rib cage, and right here, um, I would just want it to, my waist to be longer. I mean, I could go on and list everything I want to change, but most people have something about themselves that they want to fix, particularly as a dancer. You know, one of your jobs is to stare at yourself in the mirror in a leotard. What I like to tell non-dancers who don't really know about the ballet world or who don't quite understand it, I, I, this is the analogy I say to them. It's like being at the gym eight hours a day in a bathing suit because literally that's what it is. You are staring at yourself in the mirror doing physical work in a leotard body. You cannot hide. <laughs> so it is tough. And I know so many of you deal with this in, in various ways. A lot of you have had traumatic stories of things teachers have said to you or things directors have said to you. Um, a lot of it comes from your own mental state. Um, when I spoke out about my experience um, in the past year at Miami, a lot of other dancers did as well, um, which just shows what an issue this is in the ballet world. You know, when I, when I did that video, I thought, well, are you complaining? Are you making this up? Is this all in your head? And the amount of dancers that spoke out, many, many professionals who have had some sort of body image issue or trying to live up to a standard or try to fit a mold is astounding. So I want to kind of go from there today and not talk so much about me, but talk about you guys and what you can do if you're struggling. So the very first thing that I've said many, many times in various videos is there's no magic answer for this. And I want to go ahead and preface this video. You know, I am not a psychologist, a psychiatrist, you know, a licensed professional. I'm just speaking from my own experience. But even then, I think they would all agree there is no magic pill or magic bullet to help you with body image, to help you overcome it. Suddenly you're gonna wake up and it's gonna be perfect. That's never gonna happen, unfortunately. So I don't have words today that are just going to be like, oh, that's it, do this one thing and you're fixed. I wanna preface by saying that. But the thing I said in that video that I want to preface this whole video around, that I want you all to start believing, if you have to say it out loud, say it, you are worth more than your dancing. You are worth more than what you look like in a leotard or in a bathing suit or in a dress. You are worth so much more than physicality. You are worth so much more as a human being based on what's on the inside, what you do for other people, your drive, your passions, you know, what you want to do with your life, who you are as a person, how you treat other people, that's what counts. And we are in such a profession that is so visual. That is one of the hard things about ballet. It's so visual. We are corrected by what we look like. Teachers, as a, as a teacher myself, I correct people on what they look like. Pull up the, the hips, make sure the ribs are in. Da, 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 da. It's so visual. And that's what makes this so hard. So know that your worth as a human being, your worth as a person has nothing to do with what you look like in a leotard, in a bathing suit, in a dress, whatever. And as a friend once said to me, a wonderful licensed life coach, you are not a human dancing, you're a human being. Yes, ballet can be your passion. Ballet can be what you want to do with your life in some way, shape, or form. Ballet, you know, it's what I love. I never wanted to do anything else. And what I've learned over the last several years is that that thing that I work for, that one role, looking like whatever in a leotard, that role ends. Take Aurora, for example. I put on the tutu, I did the tiara, I did the whole show, we bowed, done. Back to real life. You know, I'm not a real life princess. I am not going to walk around in my tiara all day. That ends. What does continue 
is the impact you have on people, how you treat your friends, your colleagues, your family, what you're giving back. Are you inspiring? Are you, you know, trying to, to be a role model? That's one of the things I've tried to focus on myself in the past, you know, few years and, and really the last year, which is one of the reasons I spoke out because staying silent benefits no one. And so as much as I hemmed and hawed, remember the Tangle reference, I'm having the best day ever. I'm a terrible person. I, that's what I did with that video. I realized it benefited people more to speak out. And so you guys have to remember that, that as much as you work in the studio and as much as you dance and you perfect your tondu and you perfect your arm and you wear the crown and you want to get into a school, great. Work your hardest. Have goals. Work towards them. At the end of the day, at the end of your life, is wearing the tutu what's really going to matter? Profound, right? No. How many pink tutus I wore? How many tiaras I wore, how many times I bowed in front of the golden curtain, that's not what really is going to matter at the end of the day. And this is how you can start to see your own worth. This is how you can start to see your own value. So even if you're not a dancer, the things, yes, have your goals, have your passions. I'm a huge goal person. I love writing down my goals and working towards them. And I want to do this in my life and achieve this. I mean, I have a big notebook that I have been continually writing down things that I want to achieve. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is don't let the work in the studio and the TR and what I look like in the leotard define who you are, right? What you look like in a leotard does not define you. It does not make you worthy or not. Your worth comes from just being yourself, being you. You were born perfect. You were born worthy. That is what you need to remember. When that teacher is telling you, well, you need to eat salad. Well, what is, what is this jiggle in your legs? That, when a teacher says that, honestly, there's something in them that is not quite right. I, I know many, many teachers who would never dream of saying that to a student. So when a teacher is cruel to you like that, there is something wrong with them. There is something in them that they have not dealt with. You know, if you want to tell a student to why is your, you know, to, to use their legs more, basically if they're seeing leg jiggle, it's telling you to use your legs more. You don't have to say why are your legs jiggling. You say, you know what, try it on this step, try and use the back of your leg more. Pull your stomach in, your stomach's hanging out. Support from your core. It's the same thing. So when a teacher is that nasty to you, if you have teachers telling you you need to eat salad, if you have teachers saying, well, your legs don't look good in fifth position, or you can't get your legs in fifth position, or why is your stomach jiggling? That's coming from a place that has to do with them. That has nothing to do with you. They, they have not dealt with something in their mind. A lot of ballet teachers did not have the career that they wanted, and so they're still sort of living vicariously, and they just sort of, you know, they're just jealous of students in weird ways. Like, the, you would not believe how many teachers are still stuck in wanting their own career or being unsatisfied with their own careers. And it's the teachers who, no matter how big of stars they became, but the teachers who were fulfilled in dancing, no matter what rank they were, no matter what roles they did. Those are the teachers that I see loving the next generation. And I'm going to talk about him again. One of them is Chris. When I watch him teach, when I watch him with those kids, it is nothing but positive. He does not let them slack at all. But the way he teaches, the way he encourages, it's like, wow. And he has a passion for helping the next generation. You know, you can't be a a full ballet teacher and full-time teaching. I'm not talking about dancers who are still teaching in this and that, but teachers who have completely retired and full-time dancing, it cannot be about you anymore. It has to be about the student. It has to be about encouraging them. And so students, when a teacher is mean to you in that way, first of all, there's no, there's no reason for them to do that. They have not dealt with their own issues. They have not dealt with getting past the fact that it's no longer about them that it's no longer that they are on they are not on stage anymore because i see chris is just one of them see these teachers who have been so fulfilled in their own career and who are ready to pass it down to the next generation who still 
work those kids hard. I'm not saying that you have to be a teacher that's like sort of like whatever you want to do. No, you still need to push the kids, but you can push them in a way that doesn't berate them and it, and not damage their egos. There, there is such a fine line of doing that. My point being, students, if you have a teacher who is berating you, it has nothing to do with you. There is something in them that they have not dealt with. There is something in them that is still not off the stage or something is wrong. So and my point is, don't let one person, this is so much easier said than done, trust me, been there. Don't let that start to define you. Well, my teacher said I have to eat nothing but salad. That's one person's opinion. It's one person's opinion. And I know a lot of you are working towards wanting to be a professional, wanting to get jobs, wanting to please the person at the front of the room. Guess what? Even these huge artistic directors who really do define these companies and who hire and who decides who does what role and such, that's one person. And once you start to put that in perspective, it's like, okay, okay, that's one person. That doesn't define who I am. You know, when I was at New York City Ballet, honestly, you guys, I lived and died by what the person in the front of the room thought of me. Whether it was Peter Martins or another ballet master or the teachers at SAB, I lived and died by it. And it was like my world came to an end if I had a bad rehearsal or a bad show or he wasn't happy with me or one of the ballet masters wasn't happy with me. Which is why in 2010 when I started to gain weight and I started to get really sick and they didn't quite understand what it was about at the time. It was the end of the world because I had not yet realized that who I am as a person and my worth as a human being and my value was not defined by what I looked like in the mirror, by what was happening to me. And it took me a really long time to learn that. And it's going to take you a long time to learn that. That's like I said, I'm not going to say you're going to wake up tomorrow and it's all going to be grand just because we've had this chat. <laughs> Trust me, it takes some life experiences. It takes going through some tough times. And you have to mentally realize it. The first step is being aware. Okay, I am letting this define me. Okay, I am letting this get to me. I am letting that one person's opinion completely take all of my energy, take all of my joy, you know, and, and it's so easy to do, especially when it's an important person. Because trust me, I know if the director doesn't like you, the director's not happy with you, not good, right? You want to please them. You want to, but at the end of the day, ultimately, it doesn't, trying to please them is, has nothing to do with your value. So that's the first thing. Know that your value is nothing, has nothing to do with their opinion or what you look like in a leotard. Okay? And it's going to take time. Like I said, I had to go through a lot to get to this place. And let me tell you guys, I am not perfect. I still get very upset when I, I see bad comments or people talk about my body on YouTube or whatever, I'm much better than I used to be and I get over it faster and I'm able to kind of step back from it. But it still hurts. I'm not going to say it doesn't hurt. I'm not going to say it doesn't sort of sting when I, I feel like, ugh, they, they only see me because I'm a, a bigger dancer. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to say it's perfect. There, I still have days where I struggle with it or that one bad comment in a sea of wonderful ones. You know, so I still have to actively work on it. We all do. But you're going to come to a point where you start to realize, okay, I'm not defined by this. And you start to not mind as much what everyone else thinks of you if you're living your own truth, if you're living being your genuine, authentic self and doing your best and trying to, you know, be the best version of you. That's what counts. That's, that's what matters, how you treat people like I said at the top. So that's the second step, is living as you. Like I've told you in previous videos. When I first started YouTube, I tried to be a YouTuber. Hashtag, and I didn't the colored nails and the makeup. You go back and watch old videos and it's like, hey everybody, and da da da. When you try and be someone you're not, you're never gonna be fulfilled. And being fulfilled is part of getting past those people's opinions. So that's the second thing. You have to be you. You have to be your genuine, authentic self. If you want to wear purple all day and have purple hair and have everything be purple in your life, own it. If you want to, I don't know, pick it. 
who you are. Doesn't matter what race, what age, sexual orientation, doesn't matter, own who you are. Because why do we all wanna be the same anyway? That's part of being fulfilled as a person and that's part of body image. Is once you are more satisfied with who you are and own who you are, all the other stuff gets a little bit easier. For example, with me, once I started realizing that I wasn't a YouTuber who didn't like colored nail polish and like the whole thing, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I wear a dressing gown. I have a new one, by the way. I should show you guys that. I wear my dressing gown, my lace robe. I love vintage things. I have, you know, silver everywhere. I love my dishes. I, I know what colors I love. I know what makeup I like. Once you kind of get to that point, and those are all very superficial things, but once you get to a point of owning who you are, all that other stuff gets easier. So for example, when I did that Miami video and was honest and owned up to it and was like, nope, we're going to talk about this. I'm not okay with this. I'm not going to stay silent anymore. This is what I want to be. I don't want to be some sort of facade of a person that you all think everything is perfect. No. Once I started owning that, I started to feel better about myself. And it was less of a crazy overanalyzation of every leotard. You guys, when I used to film olden days, I would spend hours analyzing myself. What leotard I could wear. I feel fat today, so it means I have to wear black and da 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 and I can't do this and da 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 And I would try on 18 different outfits and, you know, and I never would have done a video showing you all every single leotard I owned with no tights on. It was basically like me and a leotard and that's it, like I did recently. It, hours preparing for those ballet videos and I still tried to hide with the sweater and the leg warmers and the thing and now I'm just sort of like, uh, I want to wear purple. Oh well, you know, I'm still like the, the Aurora video I did. I overanalyzed myself. It's why I wear long sleeve leotards a lot because I just, I feel like my arms still jiggle. But in that Aurora video, I was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to wear a camisole. It's pretty purple. Done. And I'm telling you this to show you that we all still struggle with it, and I struggled with it a lot, and it took me a long time to get here. It took me a long time to get sort of to the point where, well, what color leotard, I don't care. Oh, well, I'm not the skin skinniest one, who cares? That's what I stand for. I've started to own that. It used to eat me up, it used to eat me up, and I'd wear only black, and only black tights. Have you noticed? It's all pink tights now. And I'm not sitting here saying this thing, I'm wearing pink tights, it looks fabulous, no. I mean, I still, when I edit my videos, it's still like, <laughs> but, but I'm saying, if I can get to this point, so can you. That is my point. It took me a very long time through a bad relationship, as we know, through ups and downs with weight gain and weight loss and the illness and the no hair. Yes, I have fake hair tracks in today. Own it up to it. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things that you own who you are. Yeah, I'm wearing fake hair, y'all. Doesn't it look good? Yeah, let me show you. I'm going to show you right now, okay? I don't always wear them, but I'm going to show you, okay? Right? And I wear it because, look, I mean, it's still really thin. We're getting there. Still a little bit thin. And that's okay. You know what? I wear them, and it's fine. So many people wear fake hair extensions, FYI, um, and it's fine. So it's one of those things that the more you start owning it and getting comfortable with yourself, and yeah, you know what? I wear fake hair extensions because I lost most of my hair to an illness. Who cares, <laughs> right? If it makes you feel good, if it makes, you know, own who you are, it doesn't matter. Like I said, if you want to have purple hair, own it. Who cares? You know, if you want to wear all 50s style clothing, I love those YouTubers and bloggers who wear those like vintage stuff every day of their lives and they don't ever worry about what people are thinking about them. They don't care. They just don't care. And it's one of those things that, let me tell you, I'm sure they still deal with some insecurities. We all do. But once you get to a point where you really want to own who you are and you just go, you know what? I'm going to be me because it's going to be, I'm going to be so much happier. That's when you can start getting the point of loving yourself. And that's when you can get to the point of helping improve your own body image. That's where I'm going with this. This is a rambly video, I know. But body image does not start. You don't, cannot have good body image if you don't first love who you are as a person first. 
Because guess what? You could lose 20 pounds and still not like the way you look. Body Having good body image in a studio or in a leotard in a ballet class has nothing to do with your weight. It has nothing to do with what you weigh. I get messages from you guys all the time saying, you know, I'm, I'm this height and this weight. Is this too much? That is so, don't worry about that. Once you get to the point of owning who you are and starting to love yourself outside the studio, that's where the body image starts to get better. It has nothing to do with how, what the scale says. Absolutely not. It has nothing to do with how you look because there will always be something you want to change about yourself physically. I've always hated my rib cage. It gets in the way, quite frankly. It's rather annoying. <laughs> my waist and hip, my hip and rib are like this far apart, so I have absolutely no waist. So there's always going to be things that you want to fix. And guess what? The rib cage and the waist length, I cannot fix. That's biology. It's biology. So when I started to own who I was and, and say, you know what? I'm going to be that role model. I want to be a little more outspoken. I want to wear the clothes I want to wear. I want to wear the makeup I want to wear. Not what I think I should wear or what I think other people want me to wear. Then the body image in the studio got better. It was not the other way around. It was not, oh, I got skinny, now I'm happy. No, I'm still nowhere near the weight I used to be when I was at City Ballet. I'm probably 10 pounds heavier than when I was at um, New York City Ballet. And that's due to the illness. That's due to being 32 as opposed to 21. You know, <laughs> that's the other thing, dancers. And this, I was saying this to somebody of the day. Both men and women deal with this. It's just backwards tends to be backwards. When young male dancers, and if you're a male dancer and you watch my videos, chime in. It seems like when you all are younger and you are still working on becoming men, it's kind of like, oh, he's kind of scrawny. Oh, he's still, he's, he's still a boy, you know? And that can like get to them because here they are working their butts off trying to be dancers. And it's like, oh, he's still scrawny. Then they become men and it's like, oh, he's a man now in a company. It's the opposite for women. When you're young, oh, she's, you know, she looks great. She's a dancer. We see her body. Da -da. Suddenly you turn 16, 17, 18, you become a woman and it's, mm, I don't know, she gained some weight. You're becoming a woman. It's supposed to happen. That's one of my other problems with ballet is that when the girls suddenly become women, it's like mm, little, little extra meat on those bones. That is what is physically supposed to happen. So <laughs> it's interesting, but men deal with this too because once I spoke out, a lot of male dancers spoke out saying, you know, certain directors said that their legs weren't good enough. Certain directors said they were too short. Certain directors said, oh, you're really stocky. You'll never do this. And honestly, dancers, a lot of roles in the ballet world are determined by height. And that is something you absolutely cannot change. Take New York City Ballet, for example. Aurora is short, Lilac is tall. I don't care how good you are. Sarah Mearns, one of the principal stars of New York City Ballet, never did Aurora because she's tall. And it doesn't mean she's not a beautiful dancer. She is a superstar. She has flawless technique. She takes your breath away on stage. She was not going to be Aurora because she is taller. She was always Lilac. Height. You cannot change it. Same thing with a million other roles. Um, there's often short girl roles and tall girl roles, small and tall, they used to say, guys too. So a lot of these roles are, you are determined by height, and that is something you totally have no control over. My point being, that don't, doesn't define you. You're not going to get to do every role on the planet, you know? So don't let what you see in the mirror start to determine what your worth is, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, here's another thing. Like we talked about earlier about how at the end of your life is wearing the tutu and tiara going to matter. At the end of your life, is what you look like to the leotard going to matter? Right? It's not. That's not what you want to look back on your life and go, you know what? I just never really looked that good in a leotard. You're not going to say that. You're not going to say that. <laughs> right? No one's going to say that. And when you're having a bad day, as, as sort of, you know, weird as that analogy is and slightly like dark that analogy is, that's what you can think about. At the end of the day, at the end of my life, when I look back, is what I looked like in the leotard going to be the most profound thing? It's not.
And once you start owning who you are, once you start realizing this, and once you start realizing that you are worth more, you are a worthy person just by being a human being, that's when you can start to change. That's when the mental patterns can start to change. And like I said, dancers, it is not going to happen overnight. It took me a decade, and I still am not 100% perfect with it. I still struggle. I really do. Um, but the, the first step is to work on yourself outside the studio and be you and own up to it and be proud of who you are as a person. You know, be proud of the fact that you're not like anyone else. You know, don't try and fit a mold. I always think it's interesting speaking now as a 30 year old when I see, you know, middle school people or even high schoolers, I'll see a group of girls who look about that age and they're all dressed almost identically within the same vein, not like twinsies, but like they all have the same kind of pants, the same kind of shirt, the same kind of this. And I'm like, they are trying so hard to be just like each other when why wouldn't you want to stand out? Be you. And it, it doesn't pertain to just ballet. Be proud of who you are. Work on yourself outside the studio. Have interest. Start owning up. Be fulfilled in that way. And then you'll start to change a little bit. It'll be slow and gradual, but then your body image will start to change. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with weight in terms of body image and how you view yourself. It's not the number on the scale. It's how you feel inside. And the start of that starts with you being who you are and knowing you're a worthy person just by being a human being. So I'm going to leave it there because I feel like I could talk for another two hours on this. And I know there was a lot of, a lot of rambly, a lot of information, but I want you guys to start focusing on that. Be proud of who you are. Look back, when you look back on your life, what's going to matter? And that's what you should start focusing on. You know, look ahead five years. Is what you look like in the leotard today, right this second, going to matter in five years? Work towards your goals. Work towards your dreams. You know, if you want to be a professional dancer, work toward it. But speaking as a professional dancer who has lived this life, you can work towards it all you want. But until you are happy with who you are as a person, until you own who you are as a person, you are never going to be fully satisfied in that studio. So yeah, work for it, but also work on yourself because then you will have a fulfilling career no matter what. It's like I said in that Miami video, no title is worth your own mental health. If you're not happy, no title is going to make you happy. You have to find that first. You have to find worth within yourself first. And then no matter what you do in your career, no matter what goal you work for, you're going to be satisfied, okay? So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let's have further discussion down there. Um, if you missed the video of me doing that Aurora that I filmed a couple days ago, uh, it's right down there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so, so much. Thank you, as always, for your continuous support, not just of me but to each other. I think you guys are amazing. Uh, love you all, and I'll see you next time.